friends, it is Jenna What Is Up and welcome back to the Board Game Garden. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a sit down, chat about vlog thing for Breakout Con, which Breakout Con is a convention, a board game convention and RPG convention in Toronto, Ontario. I went to it last year, which I think last year it was in September, possibly, or August. Um, but I only went one day last year and I did do a vlog on that one, which I will put it up here. Francis and I went just for Saturday and we had a lot of fun. So we wanted to go this year and I told myself I would go this year and do all three days. Um, I think Francis was originally going to come one of the days, but then we ended up getting Walt, which he is a six month old puppy. So we can't really leave him home for an entire day. Um, so Francis just decided to stay home and I went all three days myself. Um, I did have my friend Aiden, which he joined for Friday and Saturday. And then I also met a bunch of other people along the way. So I'm very excited to share with you guys this little vlog slash chat about Breakout Con and my experience and all of the games that we played this weekend or this past weekend. So if you guys are interested in hearing all about that, then just keep on watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy. Also comment down below any conventions that you guys are planning on going to this year, any that you have already gone to, your experiences with conventions. I'd love to chat all about that down below. Hit that subscribe button if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. I say that so fast. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into this video, shall we? So starting off with Friday, like I said, I ended up going with my friend Aiden. I met Aiden through Daryl Andrews. Daryl is a local game designer. You might know him for games like Sagrada and Bosk and a bunch of other games. He's done a ton of them. Um, but yes, he started having game nights and invited me to some of them. And Aiden was there as well. So we ended up meeting through Daryl. And yeah, so Aiden wanted to join for some of it. There were some people in the Board Game Garden Discord, which if you guys do not know, I do have a Discord. So I will link it down below. I always have a link down below. And we did have a Breakout Con 2023 chat in the Discord where we were chatting. Everyone that was going were chatting about what games they were bringing and what what days they were going and stuff like that. So um, I did have everyone there that I wanted to see, but Aiden and I got there and we were just walking around, seeing different things. And we sat down to possibly start playing a game. And two of the people that I was chatting to in the Discord, um, one was Stephanie and the other was Lex. They actually came over and um, introduced themselves. And I was so, so happy that they did. Huge thank you to you guys for doing that because Aiden and I were like, we don't know what to do. And it was really nice because we ended up hanging out with Stephanie and Lex pretty much for the entire rest, yeah, for the rest of Friday, which was really, really nice. So we ended up sitting down with Stephanie and Lex and we got to our first game, which was Small Islands. Small Islands was one of the games that Aiden brought, which I brought a bunch of games to the con and so did Aiden. And we did like haul them around the entire time. And I think we ended up playing maybe two of the games that I brought and two of the games that Aiden brought. So I do wish that we learned more games before we went to the con. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about um, going forward for conventions. I think I want to make sure that I know the games before I go because everyone like talks about how conventions, oh, they're a great place to like learn new games and try new games, but it's, a really difficult environment to learn new games in with like all the noise and the people and just like everything going on. It's so hard to sit down and like read a rule book or you can't even like watch a how to play video because you know, it's so loud in there. So I definitely think going forward, I want to just make sure that I know the games that I'm going to be playing at a convention um, and not expect to learn any new games. Um, only if like the people that I'm playing with know those games and can teach me. I think someone teaching a game is a lot easier to do at a convention than everybody at the table learning a game that nobody knows how to play, if that makes sense. So yes, we ended up not getting to play a lot of the games that we brought because we didn't know them and we couldn't find anyone that knew them. So yes, Aiden did know how to play Small Islands. So we ended up playing that one. It's just a really nice light um, tile laying game where you are trying to fulfill these contracts. Um, at the beginning of your turn, you have three cards that you get given and each of them are going to have some sort of objective that has to do with um, different icons being on sp specific islands, I guess. Um, and you're going to be picking one to score for that round, one to put to the side to score for the next round, and then one you discard. And you're trying to 
draft these tiles and place them in a way to create these islands that follow your little objective card. And then once everyone has placed, I think two of them or something like that, I think there's actually like a little stack of like six different tiles. So once that stack has depleted, that um, round is over. One person has to place their ship, which needs to be surrounded by anchors or harbors to score different points. And then everyone scores for that specific objective card for that round based off of the islands that they've built buildings on. Um, it's a very fun little, not set collection, but like tile laying contract fulfillment game. I really enjoyed it. I did horrible. I think I did get last, um, but Stephanie did like so good. She like killed us all and it was pretty awesome. But yes, that was our first game. It was Small Islands. And then Stephanie actually brought a few games as well. I think she brought um, Merchants, Dale of Merchants, which I really still need to play. I have it and I want to play it very bad. Um, so Dale of Merchants. And then she also brought Doodle Dash. So we ended up playing a quick game of Doodle Dash before we headed out for some lunch. And Doodle Dash is a pretty simple, just party style doodling game. It kind of reminds me of a doodle version of just one where someone is going to be the active player and they're going to be covering their eyes, flipping over a card, and then there are seven different words on that card. They're gonna pick a number from one through seven. Whatever one they pick is the one that everyone will be quickly doodling. Um, you wanna be the first person to finish your doodle so that you can grab this little like peg thing which represents you being the first person to finish and then the second person once they're done they grab a die and start rolling it and once the handprint like the stop um gets rolled everyone else has to stop so you're kind of like trying to draw something as good as possible to get points but then you also want to draw it really quickly so that you can grab that peg um, or start rolling the die. And then the person that is the active player uncovers their eyes. They get the first doodle to guess from. If they can't guess it with that one, then the next person holds theirs up. Um, and then I believe after that, the other people hold theirs up. And um, I think we were chatting about this, but there's not really any like um, incentive to try to guess it in the first, um, like on the first card. Like I don't think there's any sort of like Oh, you get more points if you guess it sooner, um, which I think would be really, really helpful with that game. But basically, if you do get it, you get a point. So I think there should be some sort of incentive to try to guess it earlier. Um, like if you guessed it from the first clue, you get three points, second clue, you get two, and then for the rest, you get one, that sort of thing. But overall, it was a very fun little party game. Really enjoy it. Um, very funny because you're trying to draw things as good as possible in the quickest amount of time and things just end up looking horrible. So yes, uh, Doodle Dash was very fun. But once we were finished with Doodle Dash, like I mentioned, we ended up going out for some lunch and we went to this place called Chef's Hall, which was right across the street from the Sheridan which is where the convention was. And this place was so cute. There was like a Mexican restaurant, but then there were some stairs up to where there was a bunch of different um, booths. And I believe Stephanie mentioned that she thinks that like all the booths are larger restaurants, but they also have these booths to kind of let people try out some of their food. So there were pizza, there was poke bowls, tempura, uh, boba, sushi, there was just a bunch of different um, little booths. I ended up getting a salmon poke bowl, which was delicious. Um, and yeah, so we had some lunch and then we headed back over to the convention where we, I think we've tried to find like a quieter room because Aiden was gonna teach us a game um, and it's a lot easier to hear somebody in a little bit of a smaller, more quiet room as opposed to the larger gaming room that they have um, at the convention. So I really like that they have that where there are some smaller, more like quiet gaming rooms where you know, there's not as much noise and you can actually sit down and concentrate and learn um, a game. So we ended up learning a game called Skate Summer. This is one that I've been wanting to try. Um, it is from Pandasaurus and it is a push your luck game, kind of inspired by the Tony Hawk video games, which as a child, I did love playing um, Nintendo 64 Tony Hawk. It was like my favorite thing. Um, but you can really see a lot of inspiration from the video game in that game. Um, but basically it is a push your luck game where you're playing down these trick cards and each trick card has an arrow, some certain amount of arrows going both ways. And your goal is to keep yourself balanced. Um, so for example, if I played a card and there were three arrows going to my right, your left, 
I would move the little balance chip three times to the right, and then after every time you play a trick card, um, dice get rolled, and that's going to actually tell you um, how many in a certain direction the balance marker will go. So there's a little bit of luck aspect in there and pushing your luck to see if you can stay as balanced as possible. If you get off balance too many um, spaces in one way or another, you do bust or you bail. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very fun game. And then all of the cards that you have at the end of the round have a bunch of different icons on them. And those icons actually allow you to move spaces on this main board where you're collecting different um, little icon things that you want the most of at the end of the game. Um, a little bit of like, I guess, not really set collection, um, but you're trying to collect all those to get some more victory points at the end of the game. You're also trying to get some upgrades for your skateboard to allow you to do different things. It's very fun and I would definitely put it in the same group as like Cubitos and Quacks of Quidlinburg, all of those games which are just light, fun, actually they're not really light, they're like medium fun push your luck games. Um, I really, really enjoyed Skate Summer. So we ended up finishing up with Skate Summer and I think I actually forgot to mention, but I think like in the middle of Skate Summer, a guy came around with a box because he was looking for players for a game called Captain Sonar, which Captain Sonar is just like a big real-time team-based battleship. And we ended up saying, yeah, we'd love to try it. Um, I've heard of it before. I think Tim Tim Chuin was mentioning Captain Sonar at one point, but um, I was like, yeah, I'm down. So um, the guy that was actually coming around was Alan. He is now part of our Discord and he is the nicest guy. So huge shout out to Alan. We ended up finishing up Skate Summer and then meeting in the larger room for the game of Captain Sonar. And the cool thing is that one can be played up to like eight players. So it's a really fun one to do at a convention. It's a little bit chaotic because it is a real time game, but you're in two groups and each group has um, usually it's best with eight players because there are four different roles on each team. So each person gets a specific role. There's a captain, an engineer, a first mate or something like that, as well as a like radio person. Um, but the first time that we played it, we actually played this twice. The first time we played it, I was the engineer, which was kind of this fun like roll and write style thing, I guess, where you're Xing off things, but if you Xed off all of like connecting things, you could race them again. Um, it was very fun, a little bit hard to explain, but uh, yes, the second time that we played, I was the radio person, which you actually have to listen over to the other team's captain and draw in on a map which directions they're going because the captain is going to be saying out loud, um, heading north, heading south, heading south, heading east, that sort of thing. Anyways, it was very, very fun. I'm so, so happy that we did try out Captain Sonar because I think it would be a very fun one to play with gr big groups. So yes, we ended up finishing up with Captain Sonar. Indeed, guaranteed I'm not knocked out. <laughs> I'm ready. Really? Out of all words. Ready? Oh. Uh, open your eyes. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a guy that was playing Captain Sonar with us that actually had a like mentor um, meeting with some game designers for his game that he was designing. And he actually was asking people if there was anybody that would be willing to come and play the game so that he could kind of show the designers the gameplay um, with people because it is more of like a party game. So we ended up going and helping him out with that. And his game is called I Am Shala Shala. And it's this just fun memory party game. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I was laughing extremely hard with that game, um, but it was very fun. And I believe he's hoping to bring it to Kickstarter at some point this year, but um, I will let you guys know it was fun. Um, but yes, I think that was everything for, oh no, it wasn't. We actually learned push before we went to the playtest I am Shala Shala thing. Um, so we learned push, but then we had to go and help him. So we actually, after that, came back. We played a game of push, which I love push. It's one of my favorite, like, push your luck card games. Um, I taught it to everybody and everyone seemed to like it. So 
Um, we ended up playing that for the last game, and then that was pretty much everything for Friday. Aiden and I headed home. We stopped at Burger's Priest, and I got this amazing bacon, cheese, and onion hot dog, and it was a fantastic ending to a long day. I was very hungry. A lot of people say that, like, it's good to, like, remember to eat during cons, and I can see why, because, like, you... You just get into gaming and you forget that, you know, you're a human, you need food. Um, so yes, I definitely did not eat enough um, that weekend, but uh, I will learn for next time. But yes, that was everything for Friday. Moving on to Saturday, Aiden ended up coming and picking me up again, which Aiden, if you're watching this right now, thank you so much for driving almost the entire weekend. I, I really appreciate it. Um, but yes, he picked me up and I think we got to the con a little bit later than we wanted to because there was a bring and buy, which the breakout con bring and buy is probably one of my favorite things. Um, I've been saving up a little bit of money to spend on some games there. So we ended up going to the bring and buy. It opens at 12. And if you guys do not or if you've never heard of like a bring and buy, um, the way that Breakout Con does it is at 12, the people that bring in the games, they set three different prices. So at 12, each game will have a certain price and then it'll go down to a certain price at two and then again it'll go down at four. So depending on how long that game stays there, um, it'll be cheaper by the end than at the beginning. So. We went in at 12 just to see what was there. There were a ton of games and there was actually a lot more still there than I thought because we were like a half an hour late, but there were still a ton of people there, a ton of games. And we just looked around for like an hour. I got some games, which I'm gonna show you guys at the end of the video, but I got some games then. And then I believe we went back at two again, which I didn't find anything. And then I think I got one other thing when we went back at four. But our initial look around, I got a few things, and then we actually ended up going to another quiet room, and I met Aiden's friends, Mike and Ruby, which they were so nice, and I wish that I was able to spend more time with them. Um, but we ended up playing Skate Summer again, and I think we got like halfway um, through our game of Skate Summer, and I ended up having to leave because I had a, another game scheduled with Daryl and a few other people at three, so I ended up having to leave um, halfway through Skate Summer, which I was really sad because I I really enjoyed Skate Summer and I'm so happy that I was able to play it uh, one and a half times this past weekend. So um, once I left there, I went and met up with Daryl and we actually had a game of Rolling Heights planned. So I ended up playing Rolling Heights with Daryl, um, Sen. Sen is, I think, one of the designers of Mind Management um, and a bunch of other games, but that's the one that I know him most for. Um, and then we also played with Andy Kim, which Andy is actually the designer of this game right here called The Spill, which he had a copy and I told him that I hadn't played it before. So he gave me this. So thank you so much, Andy. You're so nice. Um, but I'm very excited to try this one. It is a um, cooperative game. So I'm excited for that. One to four players. Ooh, I can play it solo. Maybe I'll play it solo, but I do think that Francis said that he was interested in trying that one too. But yes, we ended up playing Rolling Heights. Um, it kind of sucks because we started playing Rolling Heights. We got about halfway through yet again. And Daryl said, hey, do you guys want to go and check the bring and buy quickly before it ends? Because we went to like the last drop. So it was at four. We went there. Like I mentioned, I grabbed one additional thing. We came back after that and unfortunately Andy had to leave and it was his copy of Rolling Heights. So yet again, I only got through half of another game, which makes me so sad because again, I was really, really enjoying Rolling Heights. I saw Rolling Heights from AEG and I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. But we started playing it and it is a fun game. Basically you're like, rolling these meeples and based off of where these meeples end, if they're on their back, they're useless. If they're on their side, they're working. But if they're standing up straight, they're working hard. Um, and you get resources based off of how hard they're working. So if they're working hard, you're getting two resources. But if they're, you know, just working on their side, then you get one resource. And you can use those resources to build buildings. And then once you've built specific buildings, you can put your little color on top to represent that you um, we're the one that built that building and then you get pro points for that and some more meeples There's a bunch of different colored meeples that get you certain things throughout the game uh, It was very fun and I'm a little bit sad that we didn't get to finish it. So I do really really want to play uh, Rolling Heights So yes, 
We finished off our game of Rolling Heights. Like I said, we did not finish it. We got like halfway through and then everyone had to leave. Um, I met back up with Aiden and we again kind of didn't really know what we were doing. Um, our friends that we met a little bit um, earlier, like Alan and Lex and um, Steph, no, Stephanie didn't come the next day. She only came on the Friday, which Stephanie, I wish you came on Saturday because it was so much fun. Um, but I do think that we are planning some more uh, get togethers with all the local people, which I'm very excited about. Um, I also met Kat. Kat was another um, Discord member, Board Game Garden community member that I was really happy to meet as well. Unfortunately, we did not get to play any games because we are both in games at different times and it's very, very hard to coordinate times of games because if one person gets into a game they're going to be in that game for a while and then you'll start a game and then you'll be in it for a while so it's really hard to figure out timing uh so yes i was very sad that we could not play any games together cat but like i said we are planning some games together in the future so excited about that uh but anyways aiden and i were like we don't really know what to do Let's see what games are in the game library for BreakoCon. Um, I will say that I looked at the list on the BreakoCon website and it wasn't like the most amazing library, but I will say that they have a lot more just in their library than they do on their website. Um, they really do need to update their website because they have a lot better games um, than they show on their website. But anyways, we went and we checked out the gaming library and we both saw one game that we really wanted to try and that was Dune Imperium. So we ended up playing Dune Imperium. We sat down and started to set it up and neither of us knew how to play it. So we were willing to sit down and learn it, um, but we did put up a little like teacher wanted sign. And actually Alan finished up his game and saw that we were needing a teacher and he actually knew Dune Imperium and he said he'd love to teach it. So Alan ended up join, joining as well as his friend Paul and then we ended up playing a game of Dune Imperium, which Dune Imperium has been one that I've been wanting to try for so, so long, just because people have said, because Francis and I really like Lost Ruins of Arnak, um, we would really enjoy Dune Imperium. And now that I've tried it, I do think that both Francis and I, well, obviously I know that I like it, but I do think that Francis will like it as well. And I can see the comparisons between Lost Ruins of Arnak and Dune, but Dune has, I don't know, some more going on. There's like the combat kind of thing. Um, there are a lot more like asymmetrical faction type things as well and special abilities that you can use. And actually with the cards, I found a lot of similarities specifically with one thing that you do. Um, basically in Dune, you have your cards, you pick up your, I think it starts out as like a hand of five. I believe, um, and you're playing a card in order to place a worker, and then you're playing another card to place another worker, and then if you have, I think, all three of your workers, you can place another card and place your worker. Um, so that's very similar to Lost Ruins of Arnak, but then at the end, once you've placed all your workers, all of the cards that you have in your hand, you actually put them down in front of you, and you can do what is on the bottom. So there are a bunch of different icons, um, and it really reminded me of Clank which it actually has like very similar iconography to Clank as well, where you have your buying power, which is in a like blue diamond. And then you also have some like fighting combat power with a red sword or a red, yeah, a red sword. Um, so it kind of reminded me of Clank as well. So really, really enjoyed that. I'm excited to play that again. <laughs> I will also mention that while we were playing Dune, there was a gentleman that stopped and said like that he enjoyed my content and that he was a patron of mine. And honestly, that like made my entire night. I was like so happy after that. So whoever you were, I believe you said your name was Jason. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you and just you saying hello. I wish we had time to like chat more and like play a game. I think I've already said all this to you on Patreon, but thank you so much. I really appreciated that and it just made me 
so, so happy and it like warmed my heart so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. But we ended up finishing up our game of Dune Imperium and then I think it was like 9 p.m. at that point and I forgot that I had to check into my hotel. <laughs> so um, I kind of had this crazy moment where all of my games, we kept some of my games in Aiden's car, which Aiden was leaving. So we ended up taking all of the games that I purchased out because I needed to bring them up to my room. So he actually went and got his car, brought me more of my games. And then um, actually we forgot that we had to take back Dune Imperium to get his license back. So I had to run upstairs and get his license for him because he was driving home. So we obviously needed his license. And then we brought my games up to my room. It was just a very chaotic moment of like him trying to get his car and then bringing me my games and then me checking into my hotel. I thought I could check into my hotel, but then I needed my ID, so I needed to wait for him to get here. It was very, very chaotic. But after that, I got up to my room, I checked in, put all my games into my room, put all my stuff into my room. I'll show you guys a little bit of my room here on some B-roll. It was a very nice room. I think I got like upgraded to like a suite, which was nice, um, with its like huge king bed. It was awesome. Um, but yes, I ended up putting everything back into my room and then tidying myself up a bit. And then I went back down with one game, actually two games. I went back down with Earth as well as Scout. And I met up with Lex, Alan and Paul again. And the big main room was closed at that point, but they did have another room that you could go and play games 24 seven, I think like it was open all night. So we ended up going there and we ended up deciding that we all needed some food. So Alan went out and got pizza, which thank you so much, Alan, for that pizza. It was great. We got it from a place called Pico and it was very good. Some fantastic, fantastic pizza. I don't know if it's just because I was like so hungry, but we had some pizza and then I think we played a little bit of sea salt and paper, which I've been playing a ton of on BGA. Definitely recommend it. It's a fun little um, card collection, set collection card game. Super, super fun. I wish I picked up a copy because I think they had some available at Breakout Con, but I didn't get it. Um, but yes, we did that. And then we ended up getting out Earth, which I was so excited to finally um, be able to teach some people Earth. Um, this was my first time playing it physically. I played it a ton on or first time playing it physically multiplayer. I played it a ton solo. And I've also played it multiplayer on BGA a bit as well, but this was my first time playing it physically multiplayer and it was so, so much fun. We actually ended up playing Earth until like 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. So that was quite a late night. So I was happy that we were able, or I was able to have that hotel room so I could just go right up to bed. So once we were finished with Earth, which Earth is fantastic if you guys have not seen it. I'm sure you've heard of it because it's been very popular recently, but it is a really great tableau builder um, where you're getting different cards and you're playing them down into this four x four tableau and getting to do different abilities on these cards um, and getting sprouts and growing these trees on these cards in order to get victory points um, and doing a bunch of different like objectives based off of these cards that you're putting into your tableau. It is just, Everything that you get to do, you're getting to do some things on other people's turns and it's just very satisfying the amount of stuff that you get to do just constantly. You're never really like waiting for anybody, which is nice. Um, but yes, we ended up finishing up the game. I think I got second in that. And our, our uh, ending scores were like pretty good. So that was a really fun game of Earth. But we finished up on Saturday night. I went to bed. I think I didn't get to bed until like four something AM. I woke up the next morning and got ready and I had to be out of my hotel room at noon. I think I was out of my hotel room at like 10 and I went downstairs and I met up with Daryl, Daryl Andrews, and he wanted me to meet a guy named Omari, which Omari is such a nice guy. And he is also a game designer. He's made um, rap gods, I believe, and hoop gods. I've never played any of his games, but I do want to try them out because um, I've heard good things about um, specifically hoop gods. I've heard some good things from, I think it was Ruel Gaviola was talking about hoop gods. Um, but yes, I ended up getting to meet Omari and Daryl. And then we also played um, with Alan as well. We played Azul, which I played Azul for the first time physically. I've never played the original Azul 
physically. I've only played it on BGA, so I was really happy to finally get to play Azul physically. It was very fun. Um, Daryl had it out for me the entire time, which is fine, but it was quite the funny game of Azul. And then Alan actually brought No Thanks, which No Thanks was one of the like older games from my past video that I mentioned I really wanted to try. So we played No Thanks. Very fun, quick game. Really enjoyed it. Did horrible. I think I got a score of like 100 and something, which you're trying to get like the lowest score possible. So that was funny, but I'm sure I will get better at it eventually. So we played No Thanks. Very fun game. Um, and then I think we, oh yeah, we ended up playing another game of Captain Sonar. So we played it with a bunch of different people, but it was a great other game of Captain Sonar. And oh, that was a good game. Um, so I played that and then Tanya actually purchased a game called Monster Voices, which is just a fun little like game where there's an active player and they have to cover their eyes and then there's a little grid of a bunch of different monsters and then each person gets a monster secretly that the active player has to guess um, based off of the monster's voice. So there's a card that's flipped that is like a little saying and you have to say it in the way that you think that your monster that you're trying to get the active player to guess would say it in. Um, so it's a very goofy game, one that I feel like some people might not like because it's a little bit embarrassing, um, but it was fun. It was a fun little quick game to finish off the con. Uh, but once we were finished with that, we did have to leave. We, I think we left at around three and then we had a lunch reservation at, I forget what it was called, uh, Gayu Kaku, I think it was called. It was like a Japanese barbecue restaurant. Oh my goodness such good food. I really enjoyed that. I think that was my favorite meal of the weekend. Um, I didn't realize that there was Japanese barbecue. I've only ever been to like a Korean barbecue, but it seemed pretty similar where you're cooking the meat on the little grill. Um, there were some really, really yummy like gyozas or like dumplings that I had as well. And I tried some Sichuan, Sichuan peppers. <laughs> I think that's what they're called. Uh, but overall, it was a fantastic, fantastic meal. And then Daryl ended up driving me home. And that, I believe, is everything that happened during Breakout Con. It was so much fun. I think my favorite game of the weekend was definitely Dune Imperium, followed closely by Earth because I've been really, really enjoying that one. And I think third was most likely Skate Summer. I really enjoyed Skate Summer as well. Um, but yes, that is everything for what happened and what we played at Breakout Con. But now, I think it's time to quickly show you guys the games that I purchased, which I already showed you the spill. Huge thank you again to Andy for allowing me to take that home. But let me see here. Let's go from smallest to largest. The smallest game that I picked up is one that Michelle over at Second Star to the Left, she's talked about this a ton. And this is Botnik, which I just love the way that this game looks. The like robot on the front is like, not the cutest thing, but I do love all of the like plants and stuff. And you are, I think like it's a tile placement game where you're like building this like robot garden, I believe, um, which is very fitting. So I ended up picking this up. I think it started off as being like $20, but I picked this one up at the end when it was very cheap at four and I got this for seven bucks. So Botnik for $7, I feel like that's a pretty good deal. And I've heard a lot of amazing things about this, um, especially for the solo. So I'm excited to try out Botnik. The second game, this was actually the first one that I saw like immediately when we walked in, I think you guys will probably see it on the B-roll, but immediately when we walked in, I saw this and this has been a game that I have been wanting because it's a game that I had in my childhood. And even like my sister has been wanting this as well because we just distinctly remember playing it when we were kids and we could not find copies of it. Um, or whenever I did see a copy of this on Facebook Marketplace, people were selling it for so expensive. But the game is Nightmare. Nightmare is my childhood. I loved this game so much. Let me know down in the comment section if you guys remember this game you would like play a video on the TV of this really creepy guy, which I'm pretty sure he's on the back here. There he is. He would be on the screen and he would scare the crap out of you. Um, and it's just a very, very fun game. I don't even remember how it plays, but I'm excited to play it again with my family 
and just bring back the memories of playing this um, as a kid. So yes, finally was able to pick up Nightmare. I think I got it for like $25. So that's pretty good. Happy about that. It's a little bit of a weird uh, size box. So I don't really know where to put it. Maybe I'll put it just on like the top of one of the shelves. Um, but yes, got Nightmare, which I was very excited about. And then next up, this game is actually out of print. And Nick from the Brothers Murph always talks about how good this game is solo. And I finally found it. And it was only $25 or $35. And that is Ex Libris. So this is a like organizing books in a library themed game. And I am so excited to play this. Nick has hyped this up. And I am very, very pumped to try it out solo. So that is that. It is from Renegade Game Studios, which they do have one called Athenium Mystic Library, which I feel like is similar, but not. Um, this one, you're like using cards for the books and stuff like that. And I think you're like putting them into alphabetical order or something. Not 100% sure, but very, very excited to try this one out. And I was happy to see it because like I said, it is out of print. Um, but I am hoping that they bring it back because it does look like a game that is different than others and the theme of like organizing books in a library is very unique. So yes, that is the second one, third, third one that I got. And then the last one. Oh guys, I kid you not, when I saw this, I freaked out. I actually passed by it and then I saw another one of this available somewhere else at the bring and buy and it was a lot more expensive. So I was like, ooh, you know what? I think I might just bite the bullet and get that. Again, I don't know if that's the right term, but I was like, I can't pass this up. Like, this is a game that I've been wanting. Um, I actually looked up on the internet, on like Facebook Marketplace and eBay and stuff to see how much people were selling this for. And I got this for so, so cheap. I got this for such a good deal. And even like, I could have waited longer and got it for even more of a good deal, but I feel like it would have been gone by then. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it now. This is a game that I've been wanting forever. It is not really available very many places. They just recently finished up a Kickstarter for some more expansions of this. Um, but the game that I'm talking about is Merchant's Cove, which I got the base game. Ow, I just hit my face. I got the base game. And then I also got three expansions. I got the Oracle, the Innkeeper, and the Dragon Rancher. Oh my goodness. I am just like so excited. I want you guys to pause right now. Go down in the comment section and let me know how much you think this was. Base game of Merchant's Cove plus three expansions. Also there's another expansion inside the base game that's like the... it's like a little expansion pack of like a bunch of additional things. I forget what it was called, um, but it's also in here. So I'm pretty sure this was like the full Kickstarter pledge of Merchant's Cove. So let me know what you guys think this is. I did look up on Facebook Marketplace and eBay and stuff and people are trying to sell this for like $250. And I got it for 85 bucks, $85 for Merchant's Cove, four expansions, I am just so, so excited. If I did wait, it went from 85 to 70 to $55. Can you imagine getting this for 55 bucks? That's crazy. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna wait because I know it's gonna be gone. Um, so I finally got a game that I have been wanting for a very long time and I'm so excited to play Merchant's Cove. I've only heard amazing things about it. Basically everyone's playing as an asymmetric character and everyone's doing the same thing or like going towards the same thing but in completely different ways. The Oracle I believe is like a roll and write. The Innkeeper is like something to do with dice possibly, or there's a dice one in here. Um, there's a deck builder character. There's a marble type mechanism character. Um, there's just like a bunch of different base mechanisms for each character. And I think it's just the coolest thing. Um, they also finished up their most recent Kickstarter of four additional characters. So it's just crazy how many different characters you can play. And I am so excited. It can also play solo. So I can play it solo and try out all of these different characters. Um, but yes, you're all going for the same thing, which is 
Um, you're a merchant trying to sell different goods to different people, but you're getting those goods and creating those goods in different ways. So, oh, I'm so excited that I found this and I'm excited that I decided to just go for it because uh, I feel like I got a fantastic deal. So yes, that is everything for today's video. I apologize if it is a very, very long video, but I really wanted to chat to you guys all about all the games that we played, all the experiences that I had. Huge shout out to all the people that I met at Breakout Con. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and being so kind and so nice. And I'm so, so excited to build these relationships even more. I met so many amazing people from the board game garden community and just in general, so many amazing people. So thank you guys so much for making my Breakout Con this year so special and I'm excited to hang out more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Also comment down below, like I said, any conventions that you guys have been to or ones that you want to go to. Um, hit that subscribe button if you get to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. And yes, love you guys so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile and I will see you in the next board game video. Bye friends.